As much as we all love it, collecting comic books can be a time-consuming and expensive hobby. If you get hooked on a series, it can be almost impossible to walk away. You just need to know what happens next, and there's nothing quite like getting to the satisfying ending to a story arc that you followed from the beginning. Unfortunately, there are some occasions where it really feels like that satisfying ending is nowhere in sight. Whether it's due to poor storytelling, poor planning, or just a poor concept to begin with, there have been some storylines in even our most beloved comics that make us reconsider if we ever really loved them in the first place. Some of these story arcs were designed to be seemingly epic, year-spanning tales. Others were clumsily extended at the last minute to squeeze a few extra bucks out of readers. And others still were just the victims of production delays and release schedule snafus that kept them around much longer than anyone wanted. However, However, each of them have one thing in common. They all overstayed their welcome by a long shot, like a What Culture video that lasts more than 10 minutes. I'm Zoe from What Culture, and it's time to talk about 10 comic book arcs that went on too damn long. Number 10, The Clone Saga. There's not much we can say about the Clone Saga that hasn't been said a million other times. Over the two years it was published, it caused more damage to Spider-Man's reputation than J. Jonah Jameson ever could. The thing is, it could have been a truly great story arc, if not for corporate greed. When the Clone Saga began, it was one of the best-selling Spider-Man runs in a long time. Instead of finishing it as originally planned, and securing it a respectable place in comic history, the Marvel editors demanded the writers make it last as long as possible. One of the most controversial decisions of this story was to write the original Spider-Man, Peter Parker, out of comics altogether. This resulted in a huge backlash from fans, who demanded to see the long-suffering Pete suffer even more. After two years of ongoing comics, spin-offs, one-shots, and ancillary issues, things were more or less restored to the status quo. At this stage, however, the clones have become so ingrained in the mythos that they're still showing up to this day. Number 9. Superman Grounded at only 13 issues long, Superman Grounded is far from the longest story arc on this list. Yet somehow, it still felt like it went on forever. A 13 issue slog that was at least 13 issues too long. After spending some time on New Krypton, Superman returns to Earth and finds that he's lost touch with humanity. In order to reconnect with the regular people of his adopted home planet, he begins a long walk across the United States that we have no choice but to join him on. After a year and two months of watching Superman self-reflect and pound the pavement, the arc finally, mercifully, ended. Number 8, The New Wonder Woman and Professor Hulk In the late 60s, DC decided that Wonder Woman was in need of a modern reboot. They seemed to decree that there was too much wonder about her, and it would be best to get rid of it all. As such, Wonder Woman was stripped of her powers, ditched her Amazonian super suit, and became an Art Deco-inspired, kung fu kicking private detective. This radical departure seems like the kind of thing that would last a few issues at most, but it went on for five full years. Wonder Woman eventually regained her powers in 1973, and this plainclothes version made shockingly little cultural impact for a character so iconic. In the 90s, Marvel decided that they would try the opposite approach with one of their most iconic heroes. Rather than stripping the Incredible Hulk of his powers, they stripped him of the non-superpowered half of his identity. Bruce Banner would no longer appear at all, and the Hulk would remain in Hulk mode permanently, although a more in-control, handsomer version of the usual savage beast. Again, this version of the character, known as Professor Hulk, seems like the kind of thing that would only last for a few issues, but in this case, it lasted for a full eight years. That's eight years without any Bruce Banner, and a whole lot of well-groomed, weirdly attractive green giant behemoth. Number 7. Dark Knight 3 – The Master Race When Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns came out in 1986, it had an impossible to overstate influence on all future Batman stories, as well as comics in general. For a long time, fans were clamoring for Miller to return to the world he'd so expertly put together, and explore his vision of Batman further. Fans got a sequel in 2001, with The Dark Knight Strikes Again, and suddenly nobody wanted to explore Miller's vision anymore. Weird, messy, and unfocused, The Dark Knight Strikes Again was a major letdown, 15 years in the making. So when the third chapter in the Dark Knight story began in 2015, fans weren't sure what to expect. While the others had only been four and three issues long respectively, the Master Race was going to be a much longer nine issues. Add to this massive delays and speed bumps in production, and fans were waiting months and months between issues being released. What should have been only a miniseries took almost two whole years to get from beginning to end, causing many fans to get tired of waiting and check out long before the finale. Unfortunately, it wasn't even particularly worth the wait. Although it did contain some insanely fun moments, it's nowhere near as iconic or as revolutionary as the original story. Number 6. Maximum Carnage Maximum Carnage really could have been renamed Maximum Profit, as the 14-part story was told in the most lucrative way possible for Marvel. As has become all too common in recent years, this 1993 story was told throughout multiple different titles, meaning readers had to buy issues of no less than five different series in order to understand the full story. If you wanted to have any chance of following this overblown arc, you'd have to be prepared to dish out your pocket money on not just the Spider-Man comic, but Web of Spider-Man, 
The Amazing Spider-Man, The Spectacular Spider-Man, and Spider-Man Unlimited. It offered nothing new to anyone who'd ever read a comic before, reducing Carnage to a two-dimensional bad guy. Its attempt at teaching a moral lesson felt like old hat to anyone who's ever read a Batman comic, or heard Spock talk about the Prime Directive, a maximum waste of everyone's time. Number 5. Garfield's Halloween Nightmare Although this story arc was only six short comic strips long, it was told using a grand total of 22 panels, and it deserves a place on this list for a very special reason. The story began with Garfield waking up in a cold, abandoned house that looked not unlike his own. The narrative high key implied that the majority of Garfield strips actually take place inside the delusional mind of a cat who has been abandoned by his owner. Slowly dying of starvation in an empty home, Garfield remains so completely in denial about his loved ones shunning him that he hallucinates an alternate life in which they never left. This arc proved to be weirdly haunting and undeniably spooky. Newspaper readers who just wanted a daily chuckle from a silly cat had to suffer through existential angst for a full week before Garfield returned to his usual, and apparently delusional, self. Number 4. Superior Spider-Man If there's one thing that Marvel should have really learnt from the Clone Saga debacle, it's the Spider-Fans love nothing more than seeing the ever-suffering Peter Parker suffer just a little more. As long as comics are being printed, nobody wants Peter to have an ending whether it be Happily Ever After or something much darker. The controversial Superior Spider-Man offered Peter that darker ending. In a Freaky Friday-style twist, Spider-Man ended up swapping bodies with Dr. Octopus, one of his oldest enemies. After Peter dies while inhabiting Doc Ock's body, the Doctor decides to take over Peter's duties as Spider-Man, vowing to be a better superhero than his nemesis ever was, and a better man than Otto Octavius. It seemed that, 20 years after the Clone Saga, Marvel had forgotten all about the huge backlash they faced any time they tried to publish two years' worth of Spider-Man comics without the real Spider-Man in them. This move was so controversial that it was even ridiculed by the main characters of the sitcom The Big Bang Theory. And if your storyline is getting slammed by the Big Bang Theory of all things, you know it might be time to rethink your approach. Number 3. Doomsday Clock Now that Doomsday Clock has finally wrapped up, it seems like a lifetime ago that we were all excited at the beginning of a crossover event between Watchmen and the wider DC Universe. That's primarily because, in comic book terms at least, it was a lifetime ago. Similar to The Master Race, the series was plagued with production delays and misrelease dates. This actually led to the series being so far behind the rest of the DC Universe, it would feature characters who had died in other comics months earlier, now seemingly alive and well with no explanation. Production delays can sometimes be forgivable, but the unique release schedule Doomsday Clock promised was a large part of its appeal. Mirroring an actual Doomsday Clock, the 12-issue series was supposed to be released once a month over a year, with each issue bringing us an hour closer to Doomsday itself. If all had gone according to plan, it could have been a singular comic book experience, rather than an intermittent 25-month waiting game. Number 2. Onslaught and Heroes Reborn The Onslaught event was another case of Marvel attempting to shill out as many different titles as they could. If you wanted to follow the story of what happened when Professor X and Magneto merged Sykes and transformed into an insane killing machine, you would have to be willing to buy 37 issues from 22 separate series. Onslaught was not particularly enjoyed by many comic book readers at the time, but it actually led into an even bigger flop. The ending of the story saw almost every Marvel hero that wasn't in the X-Men sacrificing their lives to defeat Onslaught. This left Marvel without the Fantastic Four, Doctor Doom, Captain America, Iron Man Thor, or pretty much any of the core Avengers. That was until Heroes Reborn, an attempt to recreate flagship heroes for the new Image Comics generation of the 90s. Captain America and co. returned from the pocket dimension they had been hidden in while they pretended to be dead, with all new, all different, extreme looks and personalities. There's nothing worse than a lame, bloated superhero event like Onslaught, except for one that leads into an even lamer, even more bloated superhero event like Heroes Reborn. Speaking of story arcs that lead into story arcs, Number 1, Flashpoint, and The New 52, and DC Rebirth, and whatever comes next. Fans of DC movies and TV shows are all too aware that the company doesn't have the best track record when it comes to establishing a connected universe. This tomfoolery has also been going on in the comics since 2011, beginning with a little event called Flashpoint. Well, I say little, but if you wanted to follow the complete story of Flashpoint, you had to be willing to buy 68 issues worth of comics. The story arc involved the Flash traveling back in time to prevent the death of his mother. This had the undesired effect of sending ripples of change across the entire DC timeline changing it completely. Almost 10 years later, and the Flashpoint story arc is still not technically ended. The event led straight into the New 52, which relaunched every single DC comic. This, in turn, led to DC Rebirth, which attempted to control some of the damage that the New 52 caused. Rebirth brings us all the way up to Doomsday Clock, which also leads us to another complete revamp. With thousands of issues technically under its belt, Flashpoint is the comic book arc that just won't die. And that's our list. 
any longer arcs, let us know down in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I'm Zoe from What Culture, and I will briefly mention that you can find me on Twitter at Zemaskel, but only briefly, because I don't want to outstay my welcome. Have a nice day.